Hello everybody and welcome back to the FM Scout YouTube channel with me Keepers and today we're going to be doing a continuation of the series that's currently going on the channel which is our, or everyone in F FM Scout's favourite tactics. And obviously before we get into the video, if you are looking for a football manager series, preferably lower league than I have one with Lupa Roma over in Italy. So if you want to have a look at that series then go over to my channel, the link is in the description. So as you may have guessed from the title, it is a 4-2-3-1. Now this is, obviously there's been 4 2 3 ones. Curry FM did his control tactic. This is another control tactic but it's more centred around aggressive football with high press and winning the ball back quickly and just overall very attacking football. So quickly looking at the team instructions, they're quite pretty full on but we'll go over them all. Team shape, defence, build up and attack. Now, obviously I've got it on control, you can have it on attack and if you like, attack and control and counter all work perfectly. Doesn't matter which one you put it on, it, you I'd probably only change it depending on who you're playing, but I get most results from getting it on control. So team shape, very fluid, obviously this tactic I want everyone to work in all the different positions, obviously drop in and out of positions depending on who has the ball, etc. Tempo, higher, again want to break teams on attack, especially if you're doing attacking football. This is all pretty pretty natural or pretty, what do you, what's, what's the word for it? It's pretty self-explanatory for attacking football that you need to break quickly. There's no really point in having attacking football if your tempo's on kind of lower. You want to be very quick and penetrate quickly. We've got the width on narrow as well, mainly because it's really, really hard to break down. And the only really disadvantage is that if you're playing with a narrow defence or narrow team shape, your opposing team can just do that back to you and you'll have problems as well. I find narrow the most effective. Now the defence is probably the most important in the team instructions. Not really in terms of positions on the pitch or the roles, mainly on team instructions. Now it is aggressive football, it's higher line with using the offside trap and just trying to catch them on the offside and trying to win the ball back as quickly as possible. So got on slightly higher so they are very very high so if any balls come over the top if it's a poor kind of goal kick from the goalkeeper, they'll pounce on that and win it back. Then we've got the offside trap as well, just to catch them on the offside. And complementing that, you will need very, very, well not very quick, but fairly quick centre-backs. For me, I've got Virgil van Dijk. You can see 16 pace, 13 acceleration. His physicals are fantastic, perfect for the system. And even more perfect for the system is Mauricio Lemos, who is basically a carbon copy of Virgil van Dijk. 16 pace, 14 acceleration, both of them work fantastically, they're not slow whatsoever, so any long balls over the top and they've got the offside trap on, most times than not, the team will be offside, and if the ball does go over the top, then you do have both of those centre backs who can run all the way back, track back and win the ball back. One thing that would probably increase your chances of sweeping up from long balls over the top is a sweeper keeper, I don't have Fraser Forster on that yet because he's not trained as a sweeper keeper. So I've got him on goalkeeper, again that's one thing that he can change and it will probably make the tactic a little bit better. So I've got closing down on more as well so that if the team do come in your half you're constantly pressing them, putting pressure on to either force a mistake or just get the ball off immediately. And that's where the ball when a midfielder comes in but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Prevent shot goalkeeper distribution, I've already mentioned that. If the goalkeeper does punt it up long, which they should do with this tactic, then the defence are already so high up in midfield, well, not in midfield obviously, but up to the halfway line, that it does force a lot of mistakes. And the, the amount of height that Virgil van Dijk and Lemos have got on them, they usually win every single header. You get tighter marking as well, just so individual players uh, don't really attack the ball as often, so we've got them really under wraps. And another one that is very important is get stuck in. Now this can obviously be good and bad. Good for this tactic because it gets you to win the ball back really quickly. But if you don't have disciplined players or players who um, are really aggressive, then you do accumulate quite a bit of yellow cards. Not so many sending offs, but the yellow cards do rack up if you don't have players with good discipline. The build up play is pretty kind of do what you want, but the fundamentals of it is play out of defence. There's no don't want to be putting it up long because you want to keep possession and play it out of defence is what we want. Pass into space as well, it works well with the very fluid mentality of players jumping in and out of each other's positions. Passing direction, passing directionness is on mix. We don't, we kind of want a mix between short and direct because that does work quite well with the wingers or inside forward should I say. 
and be more expressive. Again, ties in with the very fluid team shape. The wingers do have some good expression about them in terms of flair and dribbling. So we want them to be more expressive and it does help with the very fluidness of the tactic and how everyone contributes in everyone else's positions. And then attacking in the final third, there's no instructions whatsoever. They can do exactly what they want to do. They can work it into the box, they can look for the overlap, they can hit early crosses, do whatever, just as long as you keep the fundamentals of passing it into space, out of defence and being more expressive. We've also got dribbling run at defence as well because as I said, attacking tactics, you want to run straight at the defence. And again, I'm talking about the very fluidness of the tactic again with roaming from positions. Really, if you don't have this on, then it really will hinder the tactic because then players will just stick to their positions and that's not what we want. So going through these positions in terms of instructions, there's actually really no need to because there is only one position with individual instructions, well added individual instructions, and that is Fraser Forster or the goalkeeper. So you want fewer riskier passes, as in please, although we did tell you don't punt it up long, just to be double sure, do not punt it up long with fewer riskier passes and distribute it to fullbacks and just roll it out. There's no kicking it out, just roll it. Gets the pass completion all the way up and it keeps possession really well. Again, no other player have additional instructions. You have obviously the centre backs with their default instructions, but nobody has any more additional instructions on them. So going through each and every one of the, the roles, goalkeeper and defend, fairly standard. The back four of Lemos and Van Dijk. No reason why I'm not playing ball playing defenders is because we want fewer riskier passes. We just want completely mixed passing but no fancy stuff at all although we've got express on that's mainly for all the players past the halfway line we don't want the defenders to be expressive we just want them short passing and just get it up the pitch full backs as well on automatic i.e if we're attacking then obviously push forward and with the inside forwards you can get the overlap and when we're defending they drop back quite a bit as well so that's all good it keeps the solidity of the defense also, you're probably looking at a lot of players in the team and thinking, who are they? Like, who's Ibrahim? Who's Verhey? Who's Chibalika? Who's Dindar? These are mostly regens. I'm in 2021, so, you know, a lot of these players are regens. The d midfield as well do offer quite a bit of defensive cover if the fullbacks do go up top. So you've got the ball winning midfielder on defend. He'll, in the actual game, he usually drop to about here, drop a little bit deeper. So if the fullbacks do go up, then you've got Hoiberg or well, I do play Hoiberg in ball-winning midfielder, although I'm training a lot of regens in ball-winning midfielder role. So you'll drop round about here, and it gives us more kind of like a three-centre-back type of formation, although Hoiberg isn't a centre-half, but it's more of cover. And even with Chibalika, he'll sit exactly where he's positioned at, so just in front of the ball-winning midfielder, but usually kind of a lot farther back than the attacking players. So really, how it looks on the pitch is something like this. Really, it obviously it doesn't look exactly like that, but that's usually what it looks like. Four central defenders, kind of, and then you've got the wing backs kind of pushing up. Move that back. Don't want to mess about with the tactic. Put it back up. And really, the ball winning midfielder should have high tackling. Obviously, Hoiberg doesn't, but he does have a lot of good mental attributes for a ball winning midfielder. So he'll just win the ball back quickly and pass it off to Chibalika. Chibalika will do roughly the same. He'll get the ball off the ball winning midfielder won't push too high up and quickly ship the ball to one of these three players, either Marco Asensio, Dindar, well, really it's not Dindar, Dindar should, should come out for the better winger, who, by the way, you should actually have a look at. How amazing is he? He's actually getting trained to be an inside forward, but enough of that region. He's absolutely fantastic. Cost me 55 million. Uh, so they would either pass it to one of these three. So Asensio, Lincoln, or I don't even know how you say his name, Wojciechowski? Let's go for that. And they can do so many things. As I said, there's no limitations to how they attack in the final third. So they are on inside forward on attack just to leave space for the fullbacks if they do go for the overlap. Really what they can do is, and I have an example which is perfect for how the attacking works, is they can obviously cut in on the inside. Sometimes they take it to the byline and cross it back. Sometimes they actually cut in and shoot and score. And that's really what they do, but the example we have, which we'll look at in a minute, has all three of going to the byline, passing it back and shooting, uh, and obviously going to the byline, passing it into Belotti, who then lays off for Lincoln, who shoots. So really, all four work together fantastically. 
And let me see, the wingers do get so many goals. If we quickly look at Marco Asensio, you can see here in the four seasons, well, technically three full seasons, I've had them 14 goals, 20 goals, 23 goals. So they do get a lot of uh, goals, and especially having Lozano. You can see here, well, first season we got him. We're going to actually discard the first kind of two seasons because that's when I didn't have this tactic. So season three onwards. Lozano, 23 goals, 11 goals, 21 goals. So the wingers do get a lot of goals. Lincoln as well does get a fair amount of goals himself as well. Again, going to kind of... Okay, we'll take it from this season. 13 goals, 19 goals, 17 goals. So goals don't go scarce in this tactic whatsoever. So you do have Lincoln here in the advanced playmaker attack. As in, he will find pockets of space in the box to run onto balls which are cut back. And if he does get it himself from the midfield on the edge of the box, he will shoot. And more times than not, he will score. We'll have a look at his attributes in a minute as well. Pretty well-rounded, and that's exactly what you need for an advanced playmaker on attack. And Belotti, you can quickly see here, 121 goals and 175 appearances. Now, he's on complete forward on support, just so he can also help out. But if he needs to, he will attack himself. And attack, he does do. So we got him in the first season, so even with a horrible tactic, he was still scoring. 27 goals, 24, and this is when our tactic actually kicked in. 29 goals, 42 goals, 35. So it does work really well. We'll actually have a look as it assists as well. I don't know if they'll show a good comparison, but 9 assists, 12 assists, 7 assists, 9 assists. So it, I mean, it does help out when he needs to. So really that's how the tactic works. So a nice overview of it again is, so pass it out of defence. The defensive line are pretty high up to win the ball back high up the pitch. It could either be from Lemos or Van Dijk or Hoiberg. Hoiberg usually is the one who wins it back. He ships off to Chebelika. Chebelika fires it off to one of the front three and they'll all work their magic. If it does get to Belotti, he'll shoot himself or he will hold up the ball and pass it into one of the three who advance forward. So the goals do not go scarce and I'll show you that at the minute. Now let's go back right to the start. This is our first season. This is when we didn't have the tactic. We didn't have the tactic here either. And then in the third season, this is where it was introduced. So 22 wins, 7 draws, 9 losses, 74 goals and conceded 58. We finished third that year. Season after that, scored 86 goals and conceded 50. So you do concede quite a lot of goals, but that's obviously something to be tinkered with, with a sweeper keeper and something like that. And then, I think that was last season actually, we scored 97 goals. So I'm saying you will... Well, if you push it even further, you could get 100 goals in a season. And obviously the goals against went down that season as well. And this is this season. We've only won two games and lost one. So we've not played it all much this year. Tactics as well. Set pieces. I mean, I do. I did have a Southampton one. I'm not really good at corner set pieces, so we're going to completely discard that because I'm not really looked into it all that much. But analysis, the tactic as well. Last 50 games, 112 chances for us, 81 against us. Obviously... We've started 50, but this is only the last 50 matches of this season, and we've not played all that many games, so we can discard that. Goals, however, um, you can see the goal location. We score a lot just round about the penalty area, and that's what I mean by the inside forwards will come up, they'll cut inside. Kind of really, they will shoot from here and score. It doesn't usually happen all that much, but they do cut inside and play it into the penalty area for Lincoln or Belotti and shoot and score. So a lot of our goals come within the penalty area, but equally a lot of goals that we can see do come from the penalty area as well. Um, assist location as well, a lot come from inside the box because as I said the inside forwards come into the box and pass it off. And obviously you've got uh, Chibalika and uh, Hoiberg who can actually play passes in through the middle as well or sometimes it is Lincoln who actually picks up the ball and plays it into Belotti. Again the goals usually go into the bottom left hand and right hand corners and then because the crosses are usually pretty low and you just get fired into the corner away from the goalkeeper and that's usually how you score a lot of your goals. Again goals, goal locations, assist locations, we do concede a lot from the left hand side but that is obviously to do with how your team works. And this tactic, if you do download it, will not fix all your problems, and I will stress that. So actually moving on to the highlights, which I talked about, and it shows Lincoln scoring a hat-trick. So we'll view the highlights right now, we'll view the goals, wait for it to load up, and it'll show you each individual goal and how it works. Okay, so we'll try and slow this down a bit. We'll watch it once, and then we'll replay it, and I'll show you. So you'll let you sit back and watch it now.
Okay, so we'll watch that one again. So this is from a free kick, and the fullbacks do get up. It automatically looks for the overlap when we're attacking. You can see our left back here does get forward. I don't know what this free kick is about. Osvaldo, Hoiberg into Verheit, and as I say, cuts in, and he scored from the penalty area in terms of Lincoln. Now we move on to the next goal. We'll sit and let you watch that as well. So, watch that again. As I said, the defence, you can see Lemos actually wins this ball. They try and punt it up top. Lemos is already there to win it back and pass it, I'd say short, but there's the, the, the mixed passing direction. Then Wojciechowski, again, as I said, sometimes they cut in, they can either shoot or they'll go to the byline and cross it in low to Lincoln. And as I said, he'll shoot and get it into the bottom corners. There's no trying to get it top corners. That usually only happens with headers. Here's another one of Lincoln's goals as well. Again, we'll watch it again. Actually, no, we'll watch it from the start here because the highlight is pretty long. So, again, ball up top to Assombe Longa. The defence don't really cut him down already, but I think that was Chibalika who want, tried to win it back. And Hoiberg comes back and wins it and fires it to the wingers, which is exactly what I told you would happen. Wojciechowski again, cutting in on the inside, on the edge of the box, high ball into Malangu. Malangu lays off Lincoln, and that's what I said. Well, Malangu or Bellotti, either or the centre forward position on support. Sometimes he'll shoot and he will help out, and he did exactly that into Lincoln. So all three goals. First goal he got, the fullbacks overlapping and getting an assist low into the penalty area. Then the second goal you got Wojciechowski, well, or the inside forwards really, going to the byline and getting across low. And then the third goal there you got to see the striker helping out and assisting goals as well. So really that's about it. That's how the tactic works. It's very, very attacking. So if you are looking for high aggressive football, pressing football, winning the ball back quickly as soon as it's lost, and a lot of goals from the front four, this should be the tactic for you. And I will stress again, this tactic will not work for every single team. You can't just download this, throw it in, and it'll work. Maybe it will, but chances are it probably won't. So you can download this tactic and tweak it for yourself to fit around your own team. Now I've never done a tactic video before, so if I sound a bit kind of nervous and stumble on my words, that's probably why, because it is very intimidating when you talk about tactics in Football Manager, because it is a topic which a lot of people will have ideas on, and if you say one thing and they think another, you can get pulled up for it. So if I do sound like I'm stumbling over words or a bit nervous about talking about tactics, then that is why. But that is the end of this episode. If you have enjoyed, then obviously leave a like. Comment on any improvements you would actually give this tactic. Download it as well. Try it out and see how it goes. I've been Keepers, and I'll see you all in the next video.